Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott. You are in the Prog Corner, where today, man, <laughs> as the great Nathan on Shuffle has said, hey, man, I'm not a music reviewer. I'm a music recommender, and that's what we're doing here today. I don't really review stuff. I mean, I really only talk about the albums that I love. So when I hear a new album uh, that I am absolutely uh, in love with, I'm going to talk about it here. I'm going to review it, I guess. But I'd, if you've ever noticed, I've never given an album a bad review, and I never will. Because if I don't like it, I'm, why would I listen to it 10 times? There's no way, man. I only talk about what I want to talk about. And today, as the title and thumbnail certainly indicated, I'm talking about the great Ellesmere. You guys have probably never heard of him, and that's okay. I'm here to educate, man. I hadn't heard of him a couple years ago either. They are the project of one Robert uh, Roberto Vitelli. He's a cat that was in a band called... Uh, Tapper Band. He was on their last two albums. I first became familiarized with him as he became a contributor with the Samurai of Prague on a couple of things. Uh, the first album came out in 2015 called La Show Te La, uh, La Lore. And then uh, Ellesmere 2 from Sea and Beyond from 2018. Both good records. They utilized uh, Daniel Pomo on drums from the band Rain is Drain. But then on their third album, the amazing third album, man. Oh, I love this thing. Weird. With the uh, Rodney Matthews album cover. This thing came out in 2020. It came out really late, so I wasn't able to put it in my top uh, albums of 2020. It would have been in the top five. This album is absolutely amazing. And now we've come to album number four, Stranger Skies, again with the Rodney Matthews cover, which is always a good thing because I love his artwork. Oh, yeah. I said that uh, the first two albums had uh, Daniel Pomo from Rainus Rain on drums, but starting with Weird, uh, the great Matthias Olsen from Angligard plays drums on Weird and on the new album. They used to use like kind of a revolving door of vocalists. They actually have a real vocalist now. Uh, not that the guys that were singing before weren't real because they were amazing, but they've got a full-time guy. It's none other than John Wilkinson from the Samurai of Prague, the man who sounds like the second coming of Phil Collins to me. He's absolutely amazing. And uh, we actually have a real guitar player this time, too. It's uh, Giacomo and Selmi. Uh, I guess Roberto had been playing, you know, a lot of the guitars himself. On this album, he's uh, just playing keyboards and bass. And uh, helping him out with keyboards is a uh, guy named Bob Hodges, who I'm not familiar with. Uh, Thomas Bodine's on one track. The great Clive Nolan from Arena and Pendergans on one track. You got John Hackett, Steve's brother, on one track. David Jackson from Vandergraaf Generator appears on two tracks. Uh, Graham Taylor from uh, Griffins on this thing. And Stefano Vicarelli sings on one track. He's also from the Samurai of Prague. And that's the lineup. Oh, and then Ricardo Romano from Rain is Rain on keyboards here. So I guess he's kind of like on all the tracks laying it down. Uh, that's your lineup. Real, real good. Like an all-star cast, man. There's six songs on this thing. It clocks in at like 47 minutes. And man, I am loving these old school running times on albums. Think about the vinyl, boys and girls. That's, you know, there's a reason why uh, more albums are sold back in the day than they do now because people don't want to listen to an. They don't have. Sh <laughs> Man, people's attention spans are super short, so keep your albums between 40 and 48 minutes, and I'm going to be happy. Roberto cites uh, two albums as being super influential for him when writing this album. Uh, they are Genesis, A Trick of the Tale, and Rush Moving Pictures. I hear more of one than the other, but uh, again, just a dynamite record, and uh, it starts with a song called North Northwards. It's six minutes and 50 seconds. And it opens with this real expansive cinematic thing. Sounds like a John Williams film score. I thought, you know, maybe for a second we were hovering over Jurassic Park and I'm looking at dinosaurs running around. It's really amazing. And then finally, you get the sticks like keyboard, this sawtooth keyboard. But it's in a 7 8 time signature, which sticks rarely use something like that. We're in F major here. 
and uh, you hear the weird effect on Roberto's bass. He's real chorus heavy or a flange or something like that. I love it in isolation, but you know when the band all kicks in, sometimes the bass gets lost because of it. Minor, minor, minor details here, people. Uh, then you get John Wilkinson coming in, and like I said, man, this cat sounds exactly like Phil Collins. You get some nice soloing from uh, Giacomo on this track. Not a whole lot of guitar soloing from this guy. I looked him up. He's like a monster. What an incredible player. But a lot of times he's just kind of playing what the bass is playing. And you just wonder, maybe he's a bit underutilized. You know who's not underutilized is Matthias Olsen. His drumming it sounds amazing on this track. Something about going to the North Pole. It's all about going northwards here. And the next song's called Tundra. Clocks in just under seven minutes. Again, with that uh, icy cold uh, concept, it starts with a real quick 5-8 riff in C major. Uh, very memorable chorus. This was a song I really didn't care for at first because it seemed really simplistic. But man, once that riff gets into your head, uh, you will not forget it with John Wilkinson singing Tundra over the top. It's just a lot of fun. And like I said, the bass and the guitar do a lot of stuff in unison throughout this track. And honestly, throughout this album sometimes, kind of weird. Uh, the ending of this track is amazing where all the instruments kind of come down and the vocals come up almost like a little acapella section that sounds amazing. The third track is called Crystallized. Clocks in a little over five minutes and it starts with Graham Taylor from Griffin and his acoustic guitar. Just beautiful. He starts uh, like an F sharp minor and he's playing something that's kind of similar to what Steve Howe or Steve Hackett might do. Then he kind of transitions, he moves along into E major. And once the song finally gets going at like the two and a half minute mark, somehow we find ourselves rocking out in B minor. And then you get the delicious squonking of David Jackson coming in. It is just so great. This is an instrumental. Uh, really needed to be there. Uh, I really like it a lot. It, it needed kind of like a break. Uh, from all the vocals, because most of Ellesmere's records are not nearly this vocal heavy. So, and, and Matthias does some really cool drum breaks on this song. The fourth track is called Arctica. It's the shortest track on the album. Comes in just a little over four minutes. And you get this weird time signature in E major. It's real icy feeling, man. It's so cold. And, you know, I just wanted to put on a jacket when I'm listening to this. And it's a nice little song, kind of unassuming, uh, but it definitely sets you up for the next two songs, which are the, the mini epics. I love the way we sequence this album where you got the four short tracks on side one, and then side two, you got the two longer tracks, starting with the penultimate track, the title track, Stranger Skies. Uh, it's also the longest song on the album, coming in at 12 minutes and 18 seconds, and it starts with a real somber uh, vocal opening in F minor, and you hear some church bells in the background, and then you get a little church organ playing. It really sets the tone for the story of some cat that gets in an airplane, and he's flying around, and all of a sudden, he doesn't even know where he is. The skies don't look familiar. He doesn't know where he is. He can't find nowhere to land. He's running out of fuel. He finally lands the thing. It is a happy ending, but... The creepy keyboards on this track really make me think of uh, the song Eerie Manor from Weird. Such a great, creepy, goblin-esque kind of sound. And then John Hackett comes in, man. His flute playing on this track really sets everything off. Sounds amazing. I absolutely love it. Then there's like a weird Jethro Tull section. Hey, if you've got a flute player for the song, you might as well throw in a Jethro Tull sounding section. Uh, a lot of instrumental prowess on this track as we flow through a lot of different flavors. Uh, I'm just thinking this might be like an alternate direction Genesis could have taken if Steve Hackett never left the band. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this would have sounded better to me than And Then There Were Three, but that's all right. The final track is called Another World. Clocks in a little under 12 minutes, and it starts out rocking in 7-8. We're in A minor here, and this is probably the heaviest, darkest song in the album. Uh, again, you got David Jackson all the way through it, which is always a plus. Anything David Jackson's playing on, whether it's Vandergraaf Generator or Capricar's Constant, I'll tell you, I'm going to be listening. This song's a little more disjointed structurally than the uh, previous uh, epic, but I like it because it is a little darker and a little heavier. Uh, it kind of makes sense. You get a reprise of the northward uh, 
chorus on this track right before we get into all kinds of proggy changes and whatnot. Before we settle down the last two minutes, a nice little come down section, beautiful and calm at the end. I really like it. So how am I going to score this? Well, this is Ellesmere's fourth album. I'm a big, big fan. Like I said, like I said, man, this one here was one of my favorite albums of the last five years. I absolutely love Weird. I don't think this one's quite as good. I probably would have given Weird like a 9 or a 9.5. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm doing 8.5 for Stranger Skies. I will not steer you guys wrong, trust me. Uh, I will not do an album review unless I can, you know, put my stamp of approval on it and tell you you absolutely need to hear this. You should definitely buy it. It's available in multiple formats, CD, digital. There is an LP version that's going to be out, which I will definitely be buying. But hey, I'm still on dry January, man, and that might turn into dry February or dry March unless things turn around a little bit. But we'll see. I'm not worried about money. You know, money comes and money goes. The only thing that really matters is prog rock. Anyway, fools, I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Peace in the Middle East. Free Tibet. And God save the king. Save King Chucky. Chucky sees you saving. Yes, he does. That son of a gun could use you saving right now. King Charles III, listen up. We need you. We need you to be saved right now. I'll see you punks tomorrow or whenever.